Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Uh, welcome to these videos where I talk about some of the work that I've managed to do this week. And, um, oh, I appear to have put my audio recorder over my notes. That's not a good way to start the video. There we go. Okay, uh, so where was I? I was talking about the uh, work that I've been doing this week. Oh, but first of all, as usual, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of the people that basically pay me to work on Inkscape. Um, if it wasn't for you guys uh, sponsoring me through Patreon and LibrePay, I basically wouldn't have the hours available um, to work on Inkscape the way that I do and to be able to try some of the most adventurous stuff like the uh, CMYK and the color work that you've been seeing. So um, thank you to everybody who puts their money into this project. Um, carrying on from last week, the developer meeting went really, really well. Uh, essentially, we did a review of the color stuff and we walked slowly through some of the contentious problems. It turned out that there was a confusion between um, the work that I'd done on uh, the, the color spaces, basically how each of the color spaces are defined, and the difference between uh, device CMYK and uh, ICC or color managed CMYK. Essentially, and this is going to sound weird. There's a CMYK uh, way in which you can specify cyan, magenta, yellow, and black colors. That's kind of pretend. Um, it's it's not it's not bound to any actual inks that would be represented on a page. It's instead it it it's it's a it's a bunch of numbers that you translate into red, green, and blue pixels on a screen. And then eventually those end up being retranslated into actual inks that you end up uh, using on a print. Um, so once it was cleared up about why device CMYK inherits from red, green, and blue, uh, I think we got most of the contentious stuff out of the way. And then it was just a matter of reviewing the actual um, mechanics of the code. Um, I want to give a big shout out to some of the pe people that saw last week's video and were able to contribute some uh, meaningful review as well. Uh, thank you all so much. Um, I have actually continued uh, implementing some of the review, especially the way in which I want to change the uh, selected color um, mechanisms from being a single color to being a list of colors. What this means in practice is that I, I hope, and we'll see if I can pull this off, I want you to be able to set multiple colors in the fill and stroke dialog at the same time. We'll see what kind of functionality I can build out of that, but I, I kind of want something to come out of this refactoring process that's not just the same Inkscape as we had before, but with better code. I also want some cool features that I can show you guys and I can maybe attract new people to uh, funding my pro my project work. Because um, I think like new stuff definitely attracts new people. Um, so yeah, the meetings went well. Uh, but speaking of me meetings, this week has been just crammed with meetings. Uh, part of me feels like, is this what it's like to have a normal office job where every single day is meeting with people? Uh, partially, this was because I've had to take on more contract work in order to fill some of the funding losses from this year. Uh, so I've been meeting with new clients and, and basically scheduling work out. Uh, but there was a bunch of Inkscape meetings as well, um, which is good. We, we keep keeping things rolling. But I have actually been doing some work as well. So... Um, one of the bugs that I fixed was the was the um, the break that happened when you right click on a locked or hidden object. We used to have a, an, a feature where when you right clicked, the menu would contain an action that said unlock or unhide all of the things that are under the cursor. Uh, this is a really great way of being like, I know that there's a thing here, but I can't click on it right right now. So you could right click and then say, you know, unlock this uh, and unhide this. And that went away and it went away for very technical reasons about caching objects and some not great code. Uh, the replacement code that I put in place, I'm actually very happy with. It's it's a, it's a much more consistent caching mechanism that does the proper job and uh, the way in which stuff is requested. There's still a bug that's crept into Inkscape where uh, selecting items inside of a group is now broken and I have no idea how my fix broke that. 
Um, so I may have to revisit this and, and, and fix that somehow. Um, I also implemented some fixes for the uh, shape builder. Uh, I added for 1.4 the ability for you to use the shape builder on uh, raster images and symbols of raster images. Um, symbols? Basically, yes. So uh, the, the the way it works is that you, you, you have a photograph and you can put some uh, shapes around it and then you can use the shape builder to effectively do live clipping. So you can clip it to all of these objects and even, for instance, create uh, separate pieces of the image so you can basically cut it into piece pieces and then drag them around and stuff um, there was a bug where it wouldn't allow you to it wouldn't recognize clipping paths that were applied to the group that the image might be in so if you took a photograph and then you put it in a bunch of groups and then you applied a clipping path to that group uh, that clipping path would just be destroyed it wouldn't even be recognized that's all fixed i created a whole bunch of functionality for basically combining clipping paths together in a more harmonious way hopefully we can deal with clipping paths in some friendlier ways in the future which is good i always strive to make sure that the functionality that i'm building um, has um, creates the most amount of potential for future development because uh, i can certainly see how uh, coding if you just code the fe feature just by itself it's, it's a one shot, uh, but we want to be able to make Inkscape the best. And the only way you do do that really is by making sure that the code can is quite fle flexible. Um, but unfortunately, it, do <laughs> it does take more time to code it that way. Um, okay, so uh, one of the things that I had to work on that I definitely didn't want to work on was that the Inkscape website is had a massive denial of service attack. Uh, and I had, as the I'm the website administrator, so I had to spend stupid time uh, contacting uh, um, ISP uh, uh, people that run the servers, uh, doing configuration, looking up how to do configuration because I'm not a systems expert at all, uh, and trying to put in protections. The website is up now, which is great, and I think I've got the a bunch of stuff in a better position than it was before, which is nice. But uh, damn you, whoever DDoS the, the, the web server. That's not cool, man. Not cool. Uh, okay, so let's go into some of the things that have been going on in Inkscape. Um, first of all, uh, Inkscape will be at the Liberate Graphics meet, Meetup. Uh, LGM is basically it's a, it's a, it's a, a place where all of the, your friendly Liberate Graphics program programmers get together. Uh, so pe people from GIMP, people from Blender, people from Penpot, if they'll come. Uh, you know, people from Graphviz, all of the different pro projects get together and uh, talk and hang out and, and, and see if there's ways in which we can cooperate and collaborate uh, and also just, you know, hack on stuff, which is nice. Um, I did want to highlight the work of Mansi, who has been refactoring a lot of the filters in Inkscape. Uh, this is just really great work. And hopefully when you see Inkscape 1.4, you'll actually be able to use filters more or at least the default fil filters instead of making your own, those will be more useful and less ugly. Uh, so great, great work, great to see. Um, I also wanted to highlight the, the work that's been going on on the GTK4 branch. That work continues. Um, PBS and Tab have primarily been the dr drivers there, and they're basically fixing all of the issues to do with G GTK4 being like a super new library that's not entirely baked. Uh, in fact, so much is it not so in, in, in entirely baked that they're actually building their branch on the on the unreleased version of the code because they need fixes that are just not available yet. So this is probably why the GTK4 version of Inkscape won't come out until next year is simply because we can't even rely on the upstreams to be ready yet. Uh, and that's a that's a big red flag if you're doing development that the the, the libraries that you're using are not stable yet. Um, okay, so that's this week. Um, let me know in the com comments uh, how, how, you, how you're getting on. I love to see the questions that appear um, and what you think about some of the work that we've been up to. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to see you all next week. See ya.